Hi everybody, BS Outdoors here. Uh, sorry about the wind and the sun and everything else. Uh, just getting out, opening day of uh, Iowa trapping season. I did some uh, coyote sets, first time really setting for coyote. I'm not gonna show you them. Um, they're not very good and I don't want to, you guys pick something up that's not a good habit because I don't know, I've never really set anything like that. But uh, we're going out on the boat today kind of see that going out for some some uh river beaver so I'm trying to keep the keep the light right but yeah just got the boats all set up and just waiting on a uh, old Aaron Prado from Prado's train post me and him gonna go out here and uh we're gonna do some beaver trapping but anyway guys stay tuned uh I'll show you some of our sets all right so uh gonna show you guys some beaver sets I've already made this set but uh what we got here is the bank it goes bank run bank and I'm setting in this run here so just got a 330 um, it's wired off to a stick up here uh, the stand itself is wired closed the trap is wired to the stand the uh, trap chain is and then uh, on the safeties, and I learned this from uh, 330 Maniac. I hope that's how I say it. I've got horrible at spelling, but I uh, learned it from him. When you got your safeties, when you undo them, wire them shut or wire them back. Just throw some 11 wire, 14 wire, whatever, around uh, the springs, and then wire wire your safeties back. Then you don't have to worry about them falling and closing. And it gives you peace of mind because you know you took your safeties off. And you know at 2 o'clock this morning or in the morning, you're going to be like, oh, shit, did I take them safeties off? But anyway, guys, here's the setup. I got a dive stick, which isn't really needed, but it does help out a lot. Um, you can do this with three a three-stick setup, or you can get your stands from F&T. That's where I got these from. And uh, throw you a dive stick across them. So they're setting on a, a beaver run, guys. And while we're at it, we have a big old beaver lodge here. How Aaron was saying, we were dealing with some pretty good beaver. I bet this lodge is easy 40 by 40, the main lodge. Uh, the feeder bed's probably 40 by 20. And then we got a smaller lodge up top here uh for high water i'm guessing but yeah there's a uh, there's a lot of beaver sign around here guys so my boss asked me if we could take care of it for him so we're gonna do our best and uh hope i get to keep my job after this one <laughs> you want to show them the other set over there real quick or are you yeah, good yeah i can all right we got a little hiding set down here Back out here. So you would think this does get kind of deep here. You would think this spot here would be where his doorway is. So you think run right here. After feeling around, figured out he runs along this edge here and then hits hits right here. And this is where it gets deep. Uh, it's got a log on this side and then the bank comes up and that's where his run is I, it actually took me about five minutes to kind of figure out where the best placing was for uh, for this one so like I said always make sure your 330s are underwater or if you're up north I know you can have a uh, have some of it showing but here it's all got to be underwater everything's wired off that way if he does get hit not going nowhere He'll be there in the morning if uh, he swims through.
as you can see right here, you can see where he's coming out of the water, pulling mud up, tamping mud here. So I got a 330 uh, down in that channel there. I actually had to dig it out a little bit for it to fit, but uh, I couldn't pass up an area like this. I mean, always set on sign. But that is uh, running our beaver sets here on Mississippi River. Alright, so told you we were out with Aaron Prado of Prado and Trade Post. He's snare man. Uh, I ain't quite figured that one out. I'll just leave it to him. But here he is. He's going to explain to you some uh, snaring techniques. Alright, so here we are. We're out here in the mighty Mississippi. So... You can see here how far the river's going down. These beaver had a nice big run here. You can see my foot here turned side. That's, that's probably about a 30, 26, 30 inch run right here. Pretty big beaver, nice and deep. It's all dried out. And we'll say, you know, guys will pass it up. They'll be saying, well, I can't put a 330 there because it's gotta be underwater. That's where the snaring comes in. Uh, some people get away with 220s. We're, the lodge out here will show it to you here in a minute. Uh, it is humongous. That thing, I bet it's 40 foot from one end to the other. And that's no joking around. So we're going to show you right here how to, how to uh, snare dry beaver runs. So we come over here. I got it, I got it uh, actually cabled off to this uh, tree here. And I got enough cable on here. There's probably about uh, seven foot of cable. That way, when the beaver gets on there, he won't he won't wind up wrapping himself around the same tree, and then going ahead and cutting that one down, pulling the snare, getting out of there. And you want to find the bigger ones, so it's going to take him longer to eat on. So you get down into here. I said we can't put anything uh, 330 size in uh, on dry land, so we throw our snare loop in. It's my first year running some of these F and T uh, snare supports wires i have not caught anything with them yet but they are awesome so what we find is we find some regular old down brush like this he's used to coming through here he's used to ducking down he's going to come through here most beaver that you catch you're going to get him around the neck and one front leg so uh we're catching these beaver mostly for the meat because of course we all know furs ain't worth a whole lot these days you can kind of get a little idea of the size here let me get see if i can show my fist under here Put it up a little bit like that, so that beaver's going. Hey, turn side of us. Turn side of us. Good. There it is. Hey, everybody, BS Outdoors here. So we're out on the river. I told you I'd show you a couple sets. Uh, we're out here in this. Uh, well, used to be marshland. She kind of dried out now, but uh, I got a muskrat run here. I know you can't see it very well. I had to wall her out a little bit. But back behind me here, she goes pretty good. Uh, what we're gonna set here is colony trap. Got doors on both ends. You can get about three, four, four rats in here. Uh, when you make them, or when you set them, make sure your doors flop up and down. You set them the wrong way, just makes a nice little tunnel for them to go through. But uh, when you set it in here, just gotta make sure below the water line, uh, They'll drown the rats that way. Like I said, you get three, four rats per each one. Uh, they're a nice way to catch a bunch of rats instead of going around setting one tents everywhere. Set out five, six of these and some real good runs. And uh, come tomorrow, you should have should have a pretty good rat number. But thank you guys. Tight chains. Hi right, everybody, BS Outdoors. So we're back here. This is a first official check day here in Iowa. Uh, we showed you guys this beaver lodge yesterday, so gonna see what we get. Not what we we're after, but nice rat all the same. Pretty good size one. I'm pretty happy with that first catch of the year. Sit there and walk on down. Now, with the size of this lodge, kind of hoping we catch us a nice big beef. We will find out. 
Huh. Trap stand's gone. This is gonna be fun. Oh. oh. So it's running under. Oh, come on, little wire. Don't fail me now. Oh, mamma jamma. Oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, hold on. Woo! All right, boys and girls. First beaver of the year. Oh. oh, let me get him up. Ooh. Now that's what we was going after there. Good sized beaver there. Oh, go on to this next check here. I'll go back there and I'll collect them all. one now something set it off you can see he went all up and around so I just made this a lot harder to catch these once you educate a beaver beaver are really smart they're not a dumb animal so once you miss them in a trap your job just got 10 times harder. So, take you back, show you guys that snare. All right, let's go take a look. We had one knocked over earlier uh, by a deer. But uh, we're gonna fly down up in here. Let's take a look. Mm. Yep, didn't get nothing. So, that's just one of the things about it. It's trapping. But, I say at least, uh, at least it wasn't knocked down. We had one over there knocked down, had deer tracks. Got this one over here, got another one over there, it's knocked down. So, it's all part of snaring. You'll get your stuff uh, ran into like that from critters once in a while. Yeah. All right, so we got this muskrat uh, colony trap here. Let's see what we got in it. Nothing. That's how it goes sometimes. Uh, this run, maybe they didn't get used since it kind of dead ends here. But see, you got a nice run like this. I mean, it don't hurt to throw something in, the, you know, something in it like this. So you never know unless you try. 